Welcome, everybody. This is the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, special meeting where uh, tonight we're going to be discussing, reviewing, and discuss the an annual town meeting articles and take positions on the articles. We're going to review the water and sewer articles and we'll include an update on the water and sewer enterprise business. And then we're going to we have a uh, planning board announcement. Okay, let's uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Not as loud as normal, we have less people, but the selectmen are the talk. always chewing and couldn't say all the words. <laughs> Second. Two selectmen always chewing. I didn't know we were going right to candy. Side <laughs> Okay, motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair. Yes. I move that the Board of Selectmen establish a standing affirmative vote on all the articles to which we will consider this evening um, so that we can move them efficiently and not start the motion process all over again with each article. In other words, to define the motion, we get to Article 6. It's one we're going to take under consideration. We talk about it for a couple minutes. How do you vote? Because the motion's already on the table. There's a standing motion on the table in the affirmative, and then we go from there. If someone wants to vote no, they just say no, and it's, you know, if we get three no's and it doesn't pass. That's that's an order. We've done that before. Yeah. Look forward to it. So do you want to do it? Uh, do we have a, do we have a I'll second? I'll second that. Excellent. Further discussion on the on the order. Does it make sense, everybody? Cool. It's just a way to go through these a little quicker. We've done it many times. A little more efficiently, not quicker. Efficient. But it doesn't preclude anyone from saying no and having a debate and shutting something down. There's three votes. Okay. Okay. That being said, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. We have so the order. Standing motions in place. Okay. So, Mr. Kamal, you want to walk us through them? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, Good evening, good evening to the board. We have shared the hard copy version of the draft town meeting warrant. Uh, it's in front of you. And also, uh, end of last week, we shared the electronic version of the draft warrant, uh, which included links uh, to the capital article details, uh, including descriptions, uh, funds requested, and in some cases, quotes that had been received. And I would suggest that, Mr. Chair, with your permission, we start with page four, the article, chapter 90, highway funds. Mr. Chair, why are we going to go through in order or not in order? Yeah, I, I thought we should we'll start with the capital articles since we have With these guys here, and then we'll come back. It's like come back. senior tax relief, we should be yes. waiting. Yeah. Which is page three. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, Chapter 90, Highway Funds. Um, as we know, the town does receive uh, state aid to support our highway uh, and related infrastructure development and repair work. Um, we actually are not appropriating any funds through this article. It was simply uh, for the sake of being transparent, letting town meeting know that we are receiving money from the state. Okay. Any questions? None here. You will not have a question for me if we're not spending money. Mr. Chair, would you have? No, we could continue. Yeah. So then we would say all those in favor. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I just thought that there motion. Were, we're going to vote every one. Oh, of okay. I just figured we were, we were, it, it, unless there was a no that we already had, that, that this, it wasn't. No, 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 no. That okay. just puts it on the table. Then we have to stop the vote. Okay. All those in uh, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that one carries. So we don't have article numbers on this doc? Yeah, we don't have article numbers yet because it's still in draft form. So you're just going to note that we voted Chapter 90 Highway Funds article. Exactly. Like we will note the, ti the title of the article. Got it. Okay. And then moving on to page 6, Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan Update. 
Uh, with your permission, Mr. Chair, we'll ask uh, John Weston to join the meeting. Good evening, members of the board. Ladies Good evening, gentlemen. Mr. Weston. So this is uh, $190,000 to update the town's 2004 comprehensive wastewater management plan. In, fact, in fact, if I may, sorry, John, sorry, Mr. Chair. You will recall um, the last time the board reviewed the water and sewer rates, uh, there were specific recommendations that came from the board. Uh, one of the several recommendations was uh, an expectation on the part of the board to hear <coughs> about the overall, yeah, the overall, <laughs> bless yeah. you, yes. yeah, to hear yes. from staff the overall budget situation regarding the water and sewer enterprise. Uh, John and I uh, have been working with uh, Mark Abrahams and Matt Abrahams on a report that we want to share with the board very quickly, high level. We will let you know where we think the main challenges are um, for each of the enterprises. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Through the chair, as Norman stated, this is a high level look at both the water and sewer enterprise funds and the key drivers. So with regard to the water enterprise fund, whereas the water enterprise fund may be showing a positive retained earnings balance, it has a debt service that outstrips the revenue sources in the immediate, medium, and long terms. This is exacerbated by the fact that we have used retained earnings to balance the budget for the last several years. A few bullet points. Uh, the comprehensive, we have a comprehensive capital plan with projected debt to fund that capital plan. Revenues from new connections are insufficient to cover the debts, new debt service for that capital plan. We are expecting more than 600 new connections over the next five years, and the town will start to collect legacy farms connection fees in FY19. If you recall, we had to uh, pay a portion of Legacy Farms development of the Alprilla Farms wells and that was done through connection fees going to the developer. So that will end in 2019 and we'll start to receive that revenue. And we have a current retained earnings certified at $1.479 million. And what we've done below is to show FY18 through FY23 and I'll just walk you briefly through FY18. We have existing user charges at $1.5 million. We're expecting user charges from new connections to be $52,000. The retained earnings that will be used to balance the budget will be $265,000. And our total operating budget for FY18 is $2.2 million. And the debt service in FY18 is $701,000. And if you walk across each one of the each one of the years you'll happen to notice that in FY 21 for example it's going to be necessary to use retained earnings in the amount of six hundred and seventy seven thousand dollars just to balance the budget now if you look from left to right this does not anticipate any rate increases or decreases or changes so this is a, this is a static capture without any again without any anticipated changes Again, I think for the board, the key information is that uh, we have a capital slash infrastructure program uh, that is pretty expensive. And I think as you have heard from John, in the last, I think, I'll speak to the eight, nine years uh, I've worked alongside John, uh, the main focus of that um, infrastructure program has been one, to secure the water supply, but most importantly, number two, repair the old infrastructure. Uh, and, and you'll see that, in fact, with the couple projects that he's proposing in FY in <coughs> FY19. What is, excuse me, yes. what's this telling us that's different than what we heard in the summer, back in June and July when we were setting the rates? 
here's what is different. Um, the, the user charges existing, um, we had projected a higher number for that. I think owing to several sectors, we are realizing that the, the, the charges that are coming in, in fact, in 18, uh, are far less than what we had projected. <coughs> and then the, the new charges, again, this is based on a projection. We thought there were going to be more subdivisions connecting. Uh, this number is lower than what was projected back then. Um, retained. So, okay, let's, yeah. let's hold on there for a minute. Yes. So, are user charges existing? Even though we're seeing new user charges coming on, we're expecting, I see the same existing user charge going for the next six years for projections. We're not expecting that to go up? That's the next line down, user charges new. So the, so those would be added on to that. But right now we're just, that's the baseline. That's but, the baseline. So FY19. So, so FY19, when we look at user charges existing, you're just putting in existing today. You're not right. putting out in any projection. Right. Yeah. So it's not accounting for the user charges new being added in fiscal year 18. Correct. So the user charges new in fiscal year 2019 being 151,000, is that inclusive of the 52,000 in 2018 or is that a separate 151,000 altogether it's a separate 151,000 altogether and this is this is an, has been excerpt it's taken out of the the overall spreadsheet so mm -hmm. it's 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 not meant to be misleading but if you look at it it uh, it does appear that way but the the overall balance is in the amounts necessary to balance the budget so I, get, I guess the, the whole point is I'm trying to figure out why are we getting this presentation and what's different from what we were told in June and July. Because the study's going to explain us how to fix this. No, no, but the way I see it is to, 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 to Mr. Sister, in June, and, in, in, no, in June and July we were told that we had a surplus. That's correct. And, and yeah, we were actually looking at reducing rates. Yeah. So what I'm look, no, looking at this thing, you're looking at the FY18, the, the, the 1.543, for 19, it should be 1.543 plus 52,000 should be the top number over there, yeah. and then it should be that number. So it should be it should be 1 x, x plus one, and then this should be x plus one plus yeah. plus two, x plus one plus two plus three, yeah, yeah. and and so this number should be growing here, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then this one down here. Mm -hmm. That's that's a good point. However, that does not change the fact that our capital commitments far outweigh our revenues and that we have used our retained earnings to balance the budget. Why wasn't that reflected in the report we got in June and July? The projections, as I explained previously, the projections that were offered back then were higher than what we are now seeing in the actual revenues we are receiving. But that's how we pay that. Projected. That's how we pay those people for, is to give us projections for, for, for one, three, five years out, and then you know that's what we're asking to have them dynamic. We actually waited another month so that we could have a dynamic outlook of what we were going to look for. Because I was, I, I was uh, doing a Brian Her and demanding to lower the rates. And you, luckily now at this point, I'm glad that you guys stopped and kept it flat. Because if we had lower the water rates, we'd really be a, up a creek. Yeah. Pardon the pun, yeah. Mr. Chairman. If if I, if I may again. These, these lines are taken from a much larger Excel spreadsheet. So, so in fact, the, the total revenues at the end of the column, at the base of the column, mm -hmm. would reflect the fact that there are additional revenues coming online. Uh, you had mentioned a moment ago that we were told that we had a surplus. We do have a yeah. certified retained earnings of $1.479 million. And that still exists, and that will exist at the end of FY18. And what percentage of our operating... Uh budget is that so the operating budget is 2.2 million and we have 1.49 million so about 60 percent yes okay but if you look at that if I can draw your attention to the retained earnings used to balance the budget that row you'll see that it, it gets increasingly greater um, so if if we continue to use retained earnings to balance the budget that 1.49 million dollars without any changes in the rates will bring us through to the end of 2021. However, 
we're drawing down on our on our savings we're drawing down on the retained earnings well uh, yeah so I see in 2021 there's there's a spike where that goes up to six hundred and seventy seven thousand dollars but we're going down for the next three years mm -hmm. and the recommendation from the consultant that we pay every year has been to keep that that uh, retained earnings at something like 20 or 25 percent of the operating budget and we're now at 60 percent and this is where we come back to the argument of when we're getting that presentation each June and July from our consultant uh, he's showing this is what happens over the next five each of the next five years if we increase by one percent increase by two percent but we don't need to look at increasing the same or decreasing the same each year you know we can increase by one percent this year and decrease by a percent next year um, and that that's I guess my my beef with the consultants report uh, over the last several years and so now this I it's the same information mm -hmm. and I do see that yeah starting in 2021 you know we're going from you know what's now a quarter of a million dollars that we're using in retained earnings to jumping up to that 677,000 so certainly you know something needs to be done by 2021 to prepare for whatever those expenses are um, you know we want to maintain some safe level of the retained earnings but um, yeah, I mean, I guess, again, I'm, I'm just, I'm not quite sure, I'm not quite sure why we're seeing this right now. So, when yeah. it, if I may, mm -hmm. here's why you're seeing this right now. You will be hearing from the director a series of capital requests. We want you to know that as you consider those capital requests, what are the main challenges? What is the main outlook of the business? That's why we're sharing this with you now. I but would, this is a $190,000 request. This particular article we're talking about right now, this study, is one hundred and ninety grand. correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. Th that, that's why this would make sense. But when was the last time we did a study of this type for one hundred and ninety grand? 2004. Four. So it's who, been many, many years since we did that. This is all new to me tonight. <laughs> this is a rehash of what we had a big brawl about two months ago or six months ago, whatever it was. <laughs> so I would vote no on this particular request for this article till we can get all this organized better and come back next year, but we haven't done it in 10 years or 12 years, so we can wait another year. And, and I'll be honest, if, if we do vote yes on the $190,000 study, I want to know what our criteria is for choosing the consultant. And I want to know what the, what the goal is, and I want to know every deliverable and how they're delivering it and when, when they get paid. Because if it's the current consultant, I'm based on past performance, yeah. I'm really not sure if they're up for a study like that. In fact, the, these, are, these are two different issues. This is the business side. The request for the, for the sewer master plan is, uh, is actually a technical study. We use different consultants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but, but, go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead. No, you're speaking, I'm sorry. Yeah, M my suggestion is to literally look at the 2018 numbers. We have heard the board's comments regarding the, the work of the consultant, and we are taking a really good look at how to proceed going forward. So my, my, my suggestion again is to focus on the FY 2018 and 2019 numbers. The rest are projections. I, mm -hmm. in, 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 in John and my defense, I think, we went with the conservative approach. We, we were not interested in projecting what the revenues would be going forward versus simply looking at what is confirmed in our billing process. That's the safest approach we could take. Do we have the ability to sell more water? Let people turn the <laughs> irrigation on. Something. <laughs> yeah. No way. No, okay, because that's part of it. You know, we're here to sell. We're here to sell, We're also you know, We're here to sell water too. You know, if, if that's part of it. Well, I, I think we're getting away from the purpose of tonight's meeting, folks. Yep. No. In my opinion, John, are we going to cut your legs out if we don't do this nine hundred ninety thousand dollars study this year? Because we've got two years, it looks like, of positive retained earnings before. So maybe next year we could do it. But I'd be more inclined to vote for this if what we had a few months ago was smooth 
and didn't contradict what we have in front of us tonight. Yeah. So I still don't think we have our hands around or our head around this whole topic of these two funds and the various cash flows in and out. So why would we go spend another 190 grand on a system that, after many years of doing this, I st this is just a confusing year for whatever reason. And I'm asking you, if we're not gonna mess you up by not doing it this year, can we get everything organized better and have a smooth consultant meeting next year, a smooth rate set meeting next year, and then we can talk about this going into town meeting next year? If I may, hmm. the rate setting process will not, on its own, resolve the challenge that we face with regard to the SOA enterprise. That challenge is big. That challenge goes beyond rate setting. The value in doing this study now is that it identifies other business opportunities for the town. Clearly, what you will hear from John when he moves on to the next page is the fact that we have an existing sewer service district that is based on that is based on the assumption that everybody in that district will connect. Only around perhaps 35 people, 35 percent of that service district has connected to sewer. Okay. That's a big problem. And setting sewer rates alone would not solve the challenge we face. What could help is doing a study that identifies other business opportunities to improve and increase the income into the enterprise. That would be my pitch in terms of why the study needs to be done now. So, yes. Mr. Chair, through you. Um, so in, in all fairness to the consultants who we are questioning, um, I heard that the changes were because the charges are less than projected and also the number of subdivisions are less than projected. Now, a piece of what Mr. Kamala just said is they're not all connecting to sewer, i.e. some of this new growth is not coming in in town sewer areas, it's coming in on private septic, so that's not, or in private wells. So that's a piece of it. And the other piece, <coughs> I would assume that this Abrams group, their job is not land use projections. Their job is, I would assume they get their land, they look to us to give land use projections. So, you know, if, if the number of subdivisions are lower than projected and so the numbers are off, I, I can't really blame them on, on that part. Um, it, it, when you say the number of subdivisions are less, is it is it just that they're they're not sewer connected subdivisions, or are we? I know, looking at our budget for years coming, we're seeing the amount of new growth will be slowing. Um, are we seeing that already, or or where did they get the number of projected subdivisions? That's a number that the town produced based on. Yeah. Permitted developments? Yes, they did. The only disconnect is uh, we were very aggressive estimating the construction schedule. So, when you say schedule, do you mean that, for instance, some of these, for instance, legacy north parcel pieces are, uh, they're permitted, they just haven't put them in yet? It's not that we're missing on the projections of how many there they're will be. Sewer. They're, they're private. They're so private that sewer. Would, that that wouldn't wouldn't be. Be. So do we have to, what, to do, or that you have right now? One, so are yeah. these ones that are still permitted, they just haven't been built yet? That's Correct. why the numbers are off? It's not that the growth is really slowing, it's just taking longer to get online. Correct. Uh, I'll, I'll hold my sewer question for, for the second So that, that piece of it comes from our own town projections. Yes. Similar to what we do with the budget. Yeah. So will this, will this study tell us where we have to build new mains <coughs> in order to bring new people online? That will be part of the work. The other piece would be looking at uh, opportunities for enhancing connections in the existing sewer service district and other improvements that could be done to the wastewater treatment facility. Remember? No, no, wait, no I'm yeah. just not, you just talk, told me yeah. before we're talking water. Yes. I'm, gonna wait, I'm waiting for my next page to talk yeah. sewer. Okay. So this, the CWMP is the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan, so it is sewer. So that okay. $190,000 looks at the sewer. It looks primarily at the sewer service areas that were chosen in 2004 for future development and sewering. So 
So we can expand that. So this 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 could possibly because th that we ran into that with some other developments that were happening in the last couple of years that they were just on the edge and whether or not to take them on. But then there might be some other people on South Street or some other places, and they were nervous about capacity. But if we're at thirty five percent capacity, we really do need to uh, bring some more people online and, and maybe be a little more lenient when it comes to. Uh, to some of these hookups then because maybe example, we're biting our nose off to spite our face at that point by by holding a line at the line for example mr chairman lumber street there's a hotel district on lumber street that does not that is not a sewer service area or proposed sewer service area so we couldn't extend sewer if a hotel wanted to come in as an example mm -hmm. there are other examples across town that have come before us in the past but the regulations don't allow and we couldn't extend sewers out to those areas that are not identified as wastewater future development areas. So this plan would look at, it would take the capacity analysis that we did two years ago, it would look at how much capacity we have available, and where does the town, through meetings with the planning board and with the board of selectmen and town departments, where do we want to extend sewers that would maximize our growth and our development opportunities? So, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing a message that, and at least in the hotel district, and, and I agree, I think that this is getting much deeper than I know. we I should think, be I think for we this. But, this at all. but um, what I'm hearing, at least in the case of the hotel district, is that you know we would have the potential to extend the sewer. We wouldn't do it unless we knew that there was, let's just say, a hotel, <laughs> right, that wanted it. Um, so that way we can at least try to lure a hotel into that district, you know, and that type of thing. But once we do that, is the town, does the town have to charge any type of betterment for anybody who has access? Mm -hmm. So yes. now we've, you know, we're over here on Main Street and we go half mile down Lumber or a mile down Lumber um, because this new hotel is coming in. Does everybody along Lumber now have to pay a betterment? So the in views, every the condo they, there you're talking got, about. They got down. And uh, they, 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 they they're privacy one. So uh, through they're the chair, a likely scenario. We only gave it to one tech girl. Yeah. Through the chair, a likely yes, scenario would be a hotel would come in. The hotel would run the sewer line down the street. Mm -hmm. Nobody would have to pay an entry fee or betterment fee until they chose to make that connection. Okay. okay. Yeah. Which so. is counter, that, that's counter to how it works if the town puts the line in, correct. Though, right? If the town puts the line in, then everybody has to pay a betterment fee whether they connect or not. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm starting to get the hang of this. I can see there's a, there's a strong case being made by our team to look at the study for where does it make to fund the study to look at where it makes more sense to enhance the program we offer. Um, I'm still not comfortable with the overall process and input we receive about our enterprise funds and the earnings and what we need to do to keep them healthy going forward. So maybe I think some of this is sort of confused that issue perhaps a little bit more. Um, so I'm probably back to square yeah. one. I mean, I guess some of the information I would like to see is if we're running at 35% right now, um, what's what's the expected number? You know, are we ex are, do we think that we should be at 75%? And if we're at 75%, what's the delta in the revenue and does it justify spending $190,000 on this study? Um, that's, that's the kind of information I'd like to see. And then once we're at 75, you know, do we, are we starting to put pressure on ourselves because there are a lot more properties that have the capability, uh, you know, in proximity to connect into sewer, and now we're not going to have the capacity to service them if they choose to. And so now do we have to start laying the groundwork to, you know, expand our capacity? Those are, those are some of the things, and maybe those are the questions that get answered. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, that's what I'm thinking. That's <laughs> what I'm thinking. That's yeah. Yeah. In, in fact, yeah. in, in fact, that would be a good question. However, unfortunately, the comparisons are not realistic. The, the, whether we can bring the connection levels to 75% is purely theoretical. We can't force people to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. So 
even knowing that number would not help us in determining what we need to do to help bring the business to some healthy level in the near term. Mm -hmm. I mean, the problem is yeah. many, of the, many of the businesses that we would target, it's mostly businesses, obviously, that we would target to connect would have so much capacity that they'd blow us out of the water, pardon the pun, and we'd have to go build a new wastewater. I mean, we'd make this whole, we'd open a huge can of worms. Yeah. EMC has their own because we couldn't handle it. Uh, Lanza, I think we ended up sending to Milford. We couldn't handle it. So a lot of this, I think the study's going to say, you'd have to upgrade your systems and your your plant capacity, and that's not. Is it because we put? We have to upgrade our planning. We have to upgrade our capacity so that we can increase the capacity percentage. Exactly. That's too low right yeah, now. Yeah, I just. <laughs> yeah. Is it because we put? The, is it because we invested in sewer in the wrong places, where it was too sparsely populated, and that's why we can't make it? Did we not put sewer in the right places? Is what's coming right down to? No, we got populated across the town with residents before we put sewer in, and now it's hard to go back and I think put it added all over the place. I don't know. I, Ken Weissman. So, so it sounds like we're really, you're doing you do need to do this thing. About this. <laughs> I can assure you that. <laughs> yes, yeah. I move the question. <laughs> One more yes. so, water and sewer commissioner. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because that we should get water and sewer commissioners back in here. Then. <coughs> we are there. <laughs> I understand that. Okay, so uh, we have a... We need John Wright. <laughs> Okay, we have a motion and a, and a... I have one other question for Mr. Westerly. So, John, if we approve this and town meeting approves this <coughs> and the town agrees to spend $190,000 to do these studies, do this study, will we get our money's worth? Is this money well spent? Through the chair, it is money well spent because we have a we have a 14-year-old plan now that proposes sewers in areas that at the time were thought to be rip or, excuse me rich and ripe for development but they weren't developed um, so we can't even if a hotel came into lumber street we couldn't allow them to extend sewers down lumber street because that's not a sewer service area according to the cwmp so this updates our assumptions it updates the growth areas that that we've experienced it looks at the areas that have already provided their own sewers and looks at we gotta look at where do we want sewers to go? And does DEP require that we have this on file yes. and current? Yes. yes. Okay. Our, our regulations state that <coughs> I, as, as the director, I cannot extend sewers to an area that are not identified in the CWMP for development. Okay. So can we get, can we get a quick uh, overview of the sewer enterprise? Absolutely. I'm assuming this is all going under one. Yeah, it's all under one article. Yep. Through the chair. Sure. Sewer Enterprise Fund, the key drivers, whereas the Sewer Enterprise Fund may be showing a positive retained earning balance. It has a debt service that is 60% of the total operating budget, and it outstrips the revenue sources in the immediate, medium, and long terms. This is exacerbated by the fact that we have used retained earnings to balance the budget for the last several years. A couple of the key drivers. The Sewer Enterprise Fund runs as a lean operation with only two employees. User revenues are insufficient to cover debt service alone. There are few new connections expected. Only 60% of the properties in phases four, five, and six are connected. Phases four, five, four and five are down in the Hayden Road to Risa Road area. Phase six is basically West Main Street and South Street. Uh, the town issued nearly $750,000 in Phase 6, or Fruit Street, South Street, abatements. And those, those were abatements that were uh, responsibly issued. We, we evaluated those and deemed that those were uh, necessary or warranted. $240,000 per year was lost in user charges due to Lonza's closing. The town continues to rely on retained earnings to balance the budget, which is unsus unsustainable. And retained earnings are currently certified at $1.176 million. And through the church on that point, is this number higher than what we had projected when they... Uh, the retained earnings is, is about yeah. spot on. Spot on, okay. So if... This may be a silly question, but if someone comes in and takes over the Lanza building, wouldn't we be getting our 240000 back? We'd be delighted if somebody came in and turned the key. 
We should look into that. <laughs> Lonzo used a lot of water, though, didn't they? Yeah, for, just for the operations. <clears throat> and, and, and unfortunately for us, if if that is going to Westboro, that's great. If it's going to Milford, it's very expensive for us. Okay. So this, yeah, in this situation, when we look at the retain, retained earnings each year that are used to balance the budget, you know, I absolutely agree that it looks a little bit more immediately dire. Um, <clears throat> and the study, it's all one study, or it's all under one umbrella? The study itself, the 190,000, it's all, is it all considered one study, or is it broken out into two separate studies? And Through the chair, it's just a comprehensive wastewater management plan. Okay. We did our water capital plan and treatment and supply plan Three years ago. Okay. Okay. All right. So, okay. Um, so we have a uh, open motion. Do you have a second. No. So the motion is still going. Yeah. We're still on. Okay. So I have to take the vote. Okay. Ready for a vote? Uh, questions answered. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Okay, let's go. Mr. Kamal, what's next? Yeah, head and raw water main replacement. And again, this is a project that John has explained to the board before. I'm wondering if the board has any further questions. Nope. How much is it budgeted? Through the chair, it's $1.6 million to replace 5,000 feet of water main. And that'll go from where? Uh, Does it start from like the end of 85 at the Milford line up towards town? Or? Yes. yes. Okay. And where does that show in the projected numbers for the enterprise fund? So through what the chair, that shows as uh, as you look at the debt service increasing, that bottom line debt service, Yeah. that accounts for existing debt and future debt. Does it kick in in FY 2020? Is that when we think we'll start? Yes. Borrowing against this one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Interest and principal only paid in 19. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ready for a vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Okay. Much carries. Okay, Cedar Street. Street. Yeah, Cedar Street water main replacement. And again, uh, John has presented this project twice to the board. Uh, we will take any questions from the board. Stay any questions from me, please. How much? $620,000 to replace nearly 2,000 feet of water main on Cedar Street from the intersection of Main to its terminus as you're going down the hill just past C Street. Reflected in which FY budget number for debt service? Uh, that's about the same year, so it comes in at 2020 in this model though. correct okay mr. Westling 2,000 feet from the <coughs> intersection of um, route 85 and 135 mm -hmm. just gets us past C Street that's a half mile just short of a half mile yeah it's that entire length uh, th the other important piece of this is that it replaces the water main that's within a portion of the main street reconstruction and this this portion on Cedar Street the, the the extent of it is where a couple of years ago we had probably eight water main breaks that's that's one of our most porous pieces of pipe yeah mm -hmm. so <coughs> have we had mr. Manser with his new gauge on his truck going kind of 2,000 feet does this 620,000 feet encompass a water main replacement from Main and Cedar 2,000 feet or to C Street? Well, it's 2,000 feet to the end of the main. Okay. Is that more or less than 2,000 feet? I don't know. I, don't, I, I have to have to walk it out. Cook would know that off the top of his yeah, head. He would. Um, <coughs> I, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm not up on, uh, on distances, but, you know, when I think of 2,000 feet, I think it's you know, roughly four tenths of a mile and I don't know if four tenths of a mile takes you to C Street but you're the pro if you're saying 2,000 feet if, if 620,000 gets us 2,000 feet 
and, and you'll note that uh, this also supplements two hundred sixty thousand dollars in design funds that were appropriated in FY sixteen. So, so this is purely construction costs. Well, it sounds to me like if twenty five percent of it's going to be underneath the Main Street corridor. We have to do it before the Main Street corridor happens. We're not going to tear that up once we put it in. So mm -hmm. it's it's now or never, or <laughs> now or else we've got a real problem. I'm assuming the Main Street corridor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any further questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sidewalk master plan phase two. Again, this is a project at Tron. Uh, together with uh, the, the other staff you have uh, presented to the board before. Are there any questions from the board? Yeah, can we get a summary? Yeah. How much, where? Yes, and, and I actually broke out the costs uh, in the event, uh, I'll, I'll call it an a la carte menu, but it's $1.75 million to construct the next phase of the sidewalks in town, and this reflects the results of the planning board survey. We are looking at uh, Hayden Row, approximately 3,800 feet, that will run from the current terminus at EMC Park to Chestnut Street, and that's primarily in front of the new Marathon Elementary School. at $700,000. The second portion is on West Main Street, from Lumber Street, the current terminus, to Downey Street. So it would extend under Route 495, in front of the Price Chopper, over to Downey Street. 4,200 feet at a cost of $935,000. Third section is on Wood Street, and it would run from the current terminus at Proctor Street over to Walker Street for 500 feet. And that's $85,000. And the final section is on Wild Road. It's 200 feet extending from the current terminus or it actually it bridges a gap between uh, house number, right in front of house number 11 to Briar Cliff Drive, and that's $30,000. So those four sections are $1.75 million. Wow, that, that's off Chestnut? Yeah. Yes. And how much was that one again, Mr. Bristol? Uh, that's $30,000. Is there a sidewalk there now that needs to be fixed? Or? There is. There's sidewalks from either end that stop 200 feet from one another. Right. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> if I may, Mr. Chairman, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't have a question, but um, I mean, I know we like sidewalks, and I know we've had a long-term goal to try to increase them through town. Um, this is a nice to have, but quite frankly, you know, the changes with the operating budget, I saw you completely eliminate your pavement master plan, your, your pavement management plan for repairs this year. And, um, you know, looking at the amount, of, this is a borrowing article, I believe? Correct. I, I'm just saying, looking at our debt and what the borrowing is doing to these taxpayers right now, and, um, you know, 1.75 million, I just, um, I'm, I'm going to vote no. I, I'm just really Mr. Chair, is it possible to, to take on more split it up a little bit, though, because the sidewalks by the school, the yeah. new school. Well, I see, think, but then again, you know, the way I look at it, though, is now, now just, you know, we, we've we've got uh, all around the schools, all downtown is all done, you know, and, and just because we're trying to add some sidewalks outside of the downtown that always gets plowed, because other places don't get plowed. <laughs> You know, I just think we, we need to, you know, a 200-foot section that, that that's broken at Wild. You know, that, that it should be done. You know, to have walking from Downey Street to be able to get to get down to, um, uh, to, to get to 110 Grill and that whole area. That's important. Right now, people are having to walk on the edge of, at the edge of the road in order to do anything down that's, there. That's the one that I have a real difficult time with. Wow. Is Hayden Road at Downey, uh, is uh, Lumber to Downey. Um, you know, the hate, the whole thing I have a difficult time with this year, this just year. because because of everything you've gone through with the budget. Uh, but if I get down to each one of these sections, the one I have the most problem with is Lumber to Downey. Um, it's 900K, right? What's that? 900 grand? Yeah, it's 935,000, so that's over half of this. 
Um, but we've been putting sidewalks on. We put sidewalks off again last year. Yeah, we did. And we put police cruisers off for the last several years. I would um, suggest that we go forward with the sidewalk near the new elementary school. Mm -hmm because I think that's imperative. And that's 700 grand right there. That's a significant investment for the town for this year, mm -hmm. but I think that's enough. And the others we table. That would be my recommendation. Mr. Kamala, I could is even the, throw a wild the, in there too. Well, is the elementary school, solve the embarrassment. Doesn't, isn't there a sidewalk included in that at all? In fact, there was discussions mm -hmm. regarding the sidewalks around the school during the sideband review process. This one specifically was deemed not to be um, the responsibility of the elementary school building committee and was um, fought into the town. Committee? Not the entire time. Yeah. It's out in the right of way, right? Just the yes. motor. Yeah, yeah, the school building yeah. committee would be within the parcel of their control. Mm -hmm. The right of way is ours. Through the chairman, was, there was also an issue with funding that it wouldn't fund beyond the property of the school. Right. So that <coughs> Hayden Rose section goes from where to where? The Hidden Row section would extend from the current terminus at EMC Park to Chestnut Street, a okay. length of 3,800 feet. Right. So there's already a lot of sidewalk there. There, there. is on the west yeah. side. Yeah. So there's there's sidewalks all the way all the way at least to Charlesview. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. On the all west way. side. On the so west. so now this is going to so, be on the east side. So now we'd have two sidewalks. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I'm good with yeah, that. Well, that. Why is that necessary? <coughs> We have crosswalks, right? Yeah. I think people can all walk on the same side and have a crosswalk mm -hmm. as long as it's going the full length that we need it to go. I'm, well, I'm not even arguing that we should or should not have sidewalks. I'm just saying in this particular year, I, I want to pull this back to what's absolutely necessary and only that. And I think that's what, I think that's what we're trying to get to. I think that's what, I think that's what Brendan right. was saying right. is right. The if there's a sidewalk on the other side, why do we have the east side? And we have crosswalks there. Yeah. Yeah. So the, maybe we can. But in West, Main Street, West Main Street, there's not sidewalks on either side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only point well, is, is it even legal to this, walk on a divided this, highway? And, the the, and there's, uh, you know, and, and we have businesses there. But I'm not arguing that we, these, these places don't need sidewalk. I just don't think just we can do it this year. I think stuff around the school, that whole school complex, that's part of the complete school complex. But to that point, <coughs> I don't think that we need $700,000 worth of sidewalks for the school project when there are sidewalks there. You just have to cross the street. The the how does somebody, do how does somebody get from... West Main Street from Downey Street. I'm talking to, about the school no, right no, now. No, 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 no. I'm just talking about how does somebody get from Downey Street to underneath 495 how do, Bridges? How do I? How do I get from, uh, from Elizabeth the Road? How do I get from Elizabeth Road to Red Barn Coffee? There's no sidewalks there. How right, do I but, do it? But you don't have to go underneath the 495 Bridges. Yeah, but we can't solve every problem every year. And that that one in particular, I I'm not trying. I hope it doesn't offend anybody. It probably will, but. It's not a problem that's concerning me this year, you know, with this budget. If I may, the sidewalk on Hayden Row, the one that's um, servicing the school, yes, granted there's already a sidewalk on the eastern side, but we all know about the public safety issues on Hayden Row and having multiple crossing points and having children cross that road may not be what we're looking for. Uh, I, I think having sidewalks on both sides, I think, would that, that's that's uh, that's a big jump. I think that you know. I mean, I think the things that have happened there, you know, it's horrible. Um, but just for us to say having a sidewalk on both sides is going to solve that yeah. problem, um, we can't use that at the last minute here as justification for spending eight hundred thousand. Well, didn't we just I spend said, like one point nine million I said, I said that. mitigate. I didn't say so. <laughs> so okay, so it sounds like we're going down a path here. But yeah. let's play this out. The warrant is closed. This article's on the warrant. It will go to town meeting floor for discussion. And, you know, the moderator will say, how did the Board of Selectmen vote? Should we vote no, collectively, the, the, a majority no vote? They'll say they didn't support it, and that'll be the end of it. And then they'll keep doing what they're gonna do on town meeting floor. So we shouldn't beat this for the next two hours about sidewalks, it is what it is. It's still gonna go to town meeting for discussion, correct? Uh, well, no, can also no. Yeah, I, no man, to make it easy for the board, I always take direction from the board. If the board is saying take no action, I would not 
request the appropriations committee to make a motion. Right, but it's still on the warrant and it's still it, going to show up on town meeting floor. Yeah, someone sure. could walk the microphone yeah. and say, they, they could. I want to get going to that can of worms again, but somebody can go to the microphone and yeah. say, I want to debate this article. They, they can. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. We're ready for a vote. So I think we're ready for a vote. So you can't break it out. It's all or nothing. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying. Is that what, what we're saying? Even if we can break it out. I think you could. I, I think on town meeting floor you could break it out. Sure. <laughs> Someone could walk up and say, I want the sidewalk for the schools. Okay. Let's, uh, okay. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. <laughs> all those opposed? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay, moving on. Pratt Farm Wealth Investigation and New Source Approval. John, quick summary, please. Through the chair, this seeks $170,000 for the installation of three test production wells, installation of observation wells, an extended duration pumping test, uh, submitting a notice of intent to the Conservation Commission, and submitting a permit to DEP. So all of this gets us up to the potential permitted portion, but it doesn't get us construction of the actual wells and the pump station and the extending of the mains. So this is the next step of the steps that we've taken thus far in investigation of the Pratt Farm property for future well development. Mr. Chair, yes. so I'm the, I'm the chair of that committee, that subcommittee, and like some other committees that we belong to, uh, we have not been meeting regularly at all because once the scouts uh, decided that that I wasn't an ideal setup for them, um, we kind of lost a lot of our energy and momentum. It's really a water play for the community for the long term, but I don't see an immediate need for this. And I'm not sure, given some other things we're talking about, why we would need to do this this year. I mean, the, the, the committee that I'm on, We've talked about this, and this is, I think, the long-term use of, of that property for the town and just maintaining the beauty of the, of the space and doing trails, probably. Um, but other than that, I don't think there's any rush to do this unless you can tell me there's some, something I'm missing. Through the chair, we, as, as you know, we are having problems with iron and manganese in our wells one, two, and three. We've, we're, we're, we're about to start the construction of the Fruit Street well blending facility. Uh, the engineers tell us that the water that would come from the Pratt Farm well, because of the sources and the underground aquifers, would uh, potentially solve a lot of the problems that we're having with manganese in those wells. So you see us, ta if this all moves forward and these wells are actually developed, you see us tapping into that in the near future and, and using that water? Yes. And not just studying it for some future date when we throw a well in there? This is, this is to move to activating wells this is step two of a three-step process okay you know we spent a lot of money on that on that property to be used as as, as a boy scout uh, house and everything else and now it's just a, a, a uh, water you know, now it's, we, so we should actually if it's if we can use it for water we should bring it online otherwise we just bought some uh, small plant so, Mr. Um, Westerling, you said this would get us to the permitting stage. Uh, do you mean there would be permitting and then construction, or, or would we be ready to build? Would that include the permitting? How, how many more steps would be? If we funded this, then how many more steps would be, there be? There'd be one more step, which is building the pump station and extending the mains down Fruit Street. Okay, but this would bring us up to the permitted stage correct so but this isn't words, the design of the well itself no this this so we would sink the three stage. we would sink the three wells we'd sink wells around it we would do an extended duration pumping test to see how much water we can get what the quality of the water is on and on how far it draws down the aquifer we would go to DEP and say this is a good site here's our application DEP would stamp it approved then the following year we could go for funds to build the, the water pump station and extend the mains down Fruit Street. Okay, so all under this would be that, and then the next step we'd be ready to get going with construction. Okay, Correct. So this takes us to But this doesn't include any drawing, any scheme, any plans for the pump? No, it, wells. It, correct. Yeah. Correct. There's the, the, the then be a design of the pump station and it's how another money article. Oh, yeah. 
Sounds and then very, the construction is another money article. Sounds so this very is inexpensive. this is one of three money articles yeah. to put a shovel in the ground. Right. So, so we, through the chair, we did a twenty thousand dollar study of is this potentially a good site? And they looked at the soils. They they drilled a couple of holes in the ground. They they looked at the water that came out. This is the next step, which definitively identifies is this a viable water source for the town. And if it is, it gets us to the permitted portion. So one other thing that you just scared me a little bit, and you said then we have to put down the mains. So does this mean that we're going to have to put down like a mile and a half of water main, which we were just talking about at $900,000 if we tie into the water mains that come from the Fruit Street wells already? We would tie into the water mains that are at the Fruit Street. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is, it was just getting very expensive for a minute there. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Oh, for, oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Yeah, no, I've just got one more question. Sure. The, the treatment of the manganese issue and all that right now, um, how, how substantial of a cost is that? Is it one point? It's a, it's a million dollar blending facility that we're, we're constructing now. Okay, but that's being constructed regardless of this, right? Yes. So then what's, what's the operational cost? on an annual basis, roughly? It's, it's probably going to be uh, a wash because we're, we're centralizing. Right now we have wells one, two, and three, and six. Mm -hmm. We're centralizing all of the treatment at one location. We're centralizing controls. We're centralizing chemical input. There might be some additional chemical cost for, uh, for iron and manganese. Mm -hmm. uh, there should not be a dramatic increase in the annual operational costs. So, so if we just keep going with the wells that we're having, that we have, and we're starting to treat the manganese and all that, everybody's going to be fine, the water's fine, and it's not going to give us any significant increase in cost. I follow you. Yes. Okay. Everybody ready? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay. What do we get next? Pages of dump truck S30. Through the chair, it's eighty thousand dollars to replace a twelve-year-old F550 dump truck. Currently has one hundred and twenty-two thousand miles on it. It's in integral to our plow operations. And three years ago, we extended the life of this truck by three years by putting on an $11,000 dump body. Uh, but now it's it's more the mechanicals and the uh, the frame and 122,000 miles. Mr. Westling, S30 and S13, uh, same year. S30 is a 12-year-old. S13 is a 13-year-old. 12, I mean, uh, 30 and 13, which one's in better shape? I don't know right now that I could determine one or the other. I mean, if, we're, if we're looking at only replacing one, we could make that decision based on putting it up on the lift, looking at the, the mechanicals and looking at the body rot and the frame. We could make that evaluation, but I, I don't have that in front of me right now. Can we save the dump body? Um, I know we're getting to, we're getting to but we, I, you, you got some some great. Uh, well, the, the dump body, it, it wasn't an aluminum dump body, and because we replaced the dump body, that, that's the part that takes the most damage because it's, right. it's, it's carrying the salt spreader, it's carrying tools all the time, um, so that we could look at salvaging it, but I don't hold a lot of hope. No, I just figured since I was only three years old, I mean, see, the old one must have been... Right. It must have been uh, almost 10 years old. So, yeah. Mr. Kamala, when, when we, so you said 80000 Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So when we look at the value of this, do we ever take under consideration what the residual value is of the truck that they're getting rid of? Y yes, we normally do so. Yeah. There's, um, there's a in trading fact, value. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we're not. <coughs> My only thing on this is I would like to know what can do. I would like to know if we can get another year out of it. You know, it's, it's uh, like Ms. Wright said, it's, um, 
this is one of those years where, you know, it's not a fun time to be a selectman. You know, a few years ago when you could just say yes to everything, that was, that was great. Uh, you guys. No. <laughs> How many years ago? But, but what I so, wanted to say, and I'll say it to Mr. Tenstar, <laughs> I was looking at both these trucks and looking at what you said you've been putting into these things for the pairs. There are like five figure amounts on each of these for repairs, which is getting into the yep. crazy range. Um, like really penny wise and pound for yep. I mean, a 12 and a 13. I mean, the other one's 142,000. This is 122. Um, we, and one of them was like 100. You've already put in like 55,000 in repairs or something. The other was what, 25 or something? $33,000 into the 12 year old truck with 122,000 miles. And fifty-five thousand dollars into the thirteen-year-old truck with one hundred and forty-two thousand miles. I mean, if that were your own vehicle and you're getting into those numbers, you you, yeah. would, you wouldn't. Okay, that's a good truck. That's, 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 uh, yeah, that, and that's great. That that, yeah. that 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 all came out because, right. And <coughs> do they go to a trade or do they go to an auction? Because I know in past I've been to the town where they've had equipment auctions. Um, here, within our town. Yeah, there are times when we have auctioned equipment. There are times where we actually trade the equipment yeah. directly to the shop. Okay. Uh, and there are times when we hand <coughs> the equipment or the vehicle down to another town department. Yeah. The, yeah. the trade in value through the chair on both of these from our, our supplier from state bid list is $1,500 yeah. for each. 1500 This would be a nice truck for Mr. Del Torrio to have. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. West. Okay. Any further yeah. discussion? Okay. Uh, let's yeah. go let's them separate them. Yeah, just to be clear to the yes. board, the proposal is that uh, if the board is inclined to support this, they will be funded through free cash. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As budgeted. Eighty thousand dollars each. Yeah. Yes. Right as budgeted. So part yes. of what we already kicked around. Yeah. Okay. On the S thirty, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstained. Okay. Now on the S13. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The opposed and the abstention. Thank you. Pass. Okay. Moving on. Pictures of bed hall. Through the chair, this is a backhoe that is shared by both the water and the sewer enterprises. Uh, it's $126,000 to replace a 17-year-old backhoe. The backhoe is used by both divisions for emergency repairs and utility maintenance. Uh, the replacement has been postponed for approximately seven years and at this point the controls are becoming unsafe because they are loose and they don't respond in a precise manner which is essential when you're working alongside employees and fragile infrastructure. The rollover protection system is rotting, the bottom of the doors have rotten away, the swing pins are loose, etc. and this would be funded 50-50 by water and sewer enterprise funds. So $63,400 from each. It's going to be like Christmas for you next year, huh? No, sir. <laughs> Trade-in value? Uh, $22,000. And this would be purchased off the state contract. So it's a, it's a hundred and thirty seven thousand nine hundred dollars. We're equipping it with a plow at ten thousand nine hundred, and there's a twenty two thousand dollar trade in, and the balance of which is one hundred and twenty six thousand eight hundred dollars. So I'm just going to say, you know, this is this is something that we have discussed in prior years. Uh, we knew that we were beginning to come to the end of the absolute end of life on this. Uh, Mr. Westerling has warned us uh, well in advance about. The controls, obviously, the controls not working precisely is a is a safety hazard uh, for both the driver as well as the people who are working in that area. Um, and then you add on the fact that, well, I mean, when you take into consideration also that um, you know this this isn't a direct hit to all taxpayers, but more the rate payers uh, for water and sewer. Um, so. You know, that's another factor in this. So I'm going to play devil's advocate. I ran heavy equipment for 15 years. I know that you can buy 
relatively cheap uh, new set of controls for it and have them put in. Um, I ran front end loader at McIntyre Loom. 1989, I learned on a 1953 front end loader, which was used 40 to 80 hours a week. I know with routine general maintenance, <coughs> 17 years on a municipal isn't a lot to get out of a backhoe. It's not. It's not working in a quarry. It's not loading trucks eight hours a week, I mean eight hours a day. I agree with, I've seen it, I've probably run it. Um, I agree if the doors are rusted and the, and the ROPS is rusted and, <clears throat> and, 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 that we probably need to replace it. Um, $126,000, I don't know if that's a good deal for, I, I, I haven't well, bought you know, many backhoes lately. This, this can be another thing where, you know, maybe, maybe we recommend this and then in the actual execution, uh, you know, we ask Mr. Westerling to do the same as the fire chief and go out and look for something that's pre-owned. See if there's something where we can get a better deal on something that we feel good about. So the problem with, if I may, the problem with buying a used piece of equipment is it's generally run by someone that beats the hell out of it. It's not a town thing and, and mm -hmm. you get the same thing without the rust. Um, <clears throat> and you get band-aids that you don't see and so I'm for a new backhoe, but I'm also for preventive maintenance moving forward where, you know, now that you have the wash plant at the new place that, you know, there shouldn't be trucks coming in every five years saying that we're, the frames are rotting out mm -hmm. because after every storm, they're gonna run through and they're gonna be washed. And, um, <clears throat> you know, unfortunately I do use McIntyre as a benchmark where their, a lot of their equipment is new now, but a lot of it for a long time was 40 years old. Their trucks, I mean, Mac drove his 72 Brockway for a long, long, long time. And at some point, <coughs> all the Band-Aids, they do collapse. But these are trucks that are being run 60 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. Um, the loaders, the backhoes, the excavators, things like that. Preventive maintenance go a long way. And I know you haven't had the facilities for that, so I'm for this right now. Moving forward after this year, I will not be for this. You know, there's no reason for rust. Mm -hmm. So when you come back in 17 years, <laughs> Brandon is here. In 17 years, I will be Joe Pratt in the back screaming. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Okay, any further questions for Mr. Westling on the uh, backhoe? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Okay, we'll get Thank the backhoe. Yeah. All right, uh, yeah. tractor? Yeah. Any summary? Yes, through the chair. Uh, this is $177,000 for the purchase of a third multi purpose municipal tractor. And when we looked at all the vehicles that we needed this year, this was our number one. <laughs> Let's get all the others out and then we'll tell them this is our number one. Go back and reconsider this. This was our number one. This was our number one need. And, and the reason for that, the reason for that is that we have an ever increasing network of sidewalks. Um, no. We have 17 we miles of sidewalks. We can make sure that you don't have an ever increasing <laughs> well, we, <laughs> we just did. We just did. However, um, we have 17 miles of sidewalk cleared after every storm. Three of those miles were added over the previous two years, and there are five more miles of sidewalk coming. We're looking at accepting Legacy Farm South, um, which is over a mile of sidewalk. And the, the primary need for this is that currently it takes us between eight and 16 hours to clear the 17 miles of sidewalk. That's a large, that's a, that's a heavy lift for drivers that have been out pushing snow for perhaps 20, 24 hours to get into a machine and drive it for another 16 hours. So this will allow us to, to clear the snow from the sidewalks in a quicker manner. It will be less wear and tear on the drivers who are already exhausted because they've been out for a day <coughs> or two or three after multiple storms. So if we do this, are the sidewalks in my neighborhood gonna be done? No, they plow the snow onto my side. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Westerling, does this purchase of the multi-purpose tractor 
does that come with the what's it come for attachments the power angle the v the uh, snow blower and what about like a brush cutter keep going uh this this is uh the plow uh the snow blower a sander and a dump body that'll be used throughout the year primarily for snow and ice removal so this isn't one of those ones that has the the arm off it that that cuts brush no, and we've, we're, we're very happy with the two machines that we have now, which are trackless machines, um, that we use those for the boom flail mower yep. for roadside weed whacking. Yep. We don't need additional weed whacking capabilities. Okay. You can treat those chemically. We do. No, sir. <laughs> so currently, to do the 17 miles, it takes 12 to 16 hours. 8 to 16, correct. 8 to 16 and we're adding more more sidewalks. Mm -hmm. In the next three years, we're looking at an, excuse me, an additional five miles of sidewalk, and that's primarily Legacy Farms North and South, Walcott Street. Um, I'm sure that there'll be a, a demand to have those sidewalks cleared because of the density of the population. That What's the projection on acceptance of Legacy North and South? Legacy South is this May. And Legacy North because there's no development on Legacy North. I don't there's, know. If there's some, uh, but there's maybe some. another five years or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. I don't think eight to sixteen hours is unreasonable after a storm to get your sidewalk shoveled for you. It's my thought. I do my neighborhood. My new machine. That's nice. You get that 36 inch machine. Maybe What's the price on this? I do. 177,000. 177,000 to get a third one? Yes. Is this a really important thing for us this year? I know you said it, but is it really something we have to do now? So, again, of, of the, the, the three highway vehicles, this was our primary top request. The, the backhoe is separate because that's water and sewer enterprise. So this is above what other two? Two trucks. The two uh, $80,000 pickup trucks. Uh, how, how can that be when that sounded like it was a matter of safety for the driver and this is a matter of getting to sidewalks a little more quickly? So through the chair, the, the, the safety of the operator and the people beside it was the backhoe for the water and sewer. Mm -hmm. The other one, the other two were the fact that they had 120 plus thousand miles on them. They were 13 years old. They were experiencing body rot. Mm -hmm. And 30 and 35 and $55,000 we've been putting to each of them already. I don't see the need for this. Can I just ask, is there a uh, correlation between sidewalks being plowed and schools being opened? Uh, through the chair, that is one of the considerations that the superintendent takes into account when she is having the discussion with, with the team at 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, are the sidewalks clear? If not, when will they be clear? Mm -hmm. That's only within a certain radius. Mm. We've been at, have we seen this one before in years past? No, sir. Okay. Uh, it, let me retract that. We, we had it proposed initially last year, and when we were asked to trim back our budgets, we pulled it off and pushed it out a year. One more year. Further discussion, any further questions, Rob? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. No. Okay. Another four to one. Okay. Anything else, Sean? No, no, sir. Yeah. Okay. The report commission Dave Tartorio will talk about the main street corridor project. Thank you very much. Thanks, 
give a quick 15 minute PowerPoint presentation for us on this, Dave? <laughs> Uh, there's two articles this year for. Yeah, let's focus on the underground in first. Uh, yeah. uh, Which one is that? Which page? Sir? PG. Is that mine, Mr. Weston? Page eight. Yeah, page eight. Yep. Underground, okay. Are these, is this, is this, excuse me, say, Mr. Chair, are, are these articles in the order they're going to appear before town meeting, or are you going to still move them around a little bit? We may move them around based on input. I like Wouldn't we want to have the undergrounding and the Main Street project itself next to each other? I like Mr. Sestari's idea of pulling them out of a hat. I, <laughs> I love that idea. I think you're random. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think don't know that if you can legally I do that think or not. That, I think that we should plan on a two night meeting, <coughs> and as far as fiscal impact, it should be equal for both nights for the for the amount that's possible to impact by vote. Yeah. I did check with the moderator, and and um, he says it's it is possible to take take them out of order. It all depends on. Be a revenue maker. We could auction off who gets to pick. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Main Street Court. So, outside the rabbit out of a hat discussion, <laughs> are we going to put similar articles near each other so that there's some logic to the debate? I mean, that, that's a pitch we need to make to the moderator. Yeah, I think that's 100% mm -hmm. yeah. under the control of the moderator. He sets the numbers of the articles? Well, he sets yeah. the order. The order. I, I, again, the groupings are based on subject matter right yeah okay all right so when with that moderators meeting which is typically the chair the moderator town manager appropriations chair whomever chair. whenever you guys gather for that it should be soon next couple of weeks I think <coughs> putting like articles together makes sense and for the undergrounding it's it's well for downtown it's undergrounding and in the quarter project itself right correct just a something to think about Okay. Uh, for the Main Street Corridor Project article, um, this article is going to be requesting funding for uh, non-eligible items um, for the undergrounding of utilities. Uh, there may be some other minor non-eligible items, but it's mostly undergrounding uh, of the utilities and, and the associated, you know, uh, pieces of the design like the uh, street lighting will need to change. Um, for utilities to go underground. Uh, right now, the estimate for, for, for this is about $3 million. We've been talking about that for <coughs> for some time. So, um, you know, that number, you know, but we have an estimate from Eversource um, for their design, and that's the big, the big number. Um, Verizon, Comcast, um, fiber companies, cable, uh, there's light tower, there's probably a half a dozen underground utilities out there. Uh, Verizon is by far the probably 70% 70, 70 of that cost. Is to do the yeah, that's what's I'm sorry, what did I say? Verizon, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Verizon has a draft design. They're, they're doing their own QAQC. Um, they're supposed to, they're supposed to have it too. It's by the end of the month, last month. Uh, so we, we should have a firm number from them. We're expecting that to be in a, you know, uh, $250,000 range, we're hoping, um, based on VHB's estimate. Um, Comcast is, we're also working with them um, to, to finite, give a finite number on this, but, you know, the $3 million is, is a pretty firm number. And what's going to be the proposed funding source for that $3 million? <coughs> a borrowing? Borrowing. The, the overall cost of the undergrounding is is, is about five and a half, um, but uh, there's already a couple of host community agreements where there's funding um, that can be utilized for for the undergrounding utilities for the project. So so the motion's going to be for five and a half million dollars. That's the full amount, and then we'll talk about 
the, the, the mitigation funds we have from new other projects in town, leaving a balance of $3 million. Correct. And this is proposed to be done inside the levy as a debt service item on the budget, <coughs> correct? Correct, unless the board feels otherwise. So is the Main Street Corridor project, are we ready to start doing this? Yeah, that was my question. So, you know, if, if we're still in the, in the tip for, for the state, why would we appropriate $5.2 million, 5 .2 million for this if we're not if we're not ready to go um, must like you're tying your shoes before you put your suit on I yes it, it really <coughs> feels that way unfortunately must DOT, must must DOT has made it pretty clear that the town has to have a confirmed source of funding for the underground for it to be included in the 75 percent design yes yeah, so we, we have to show the state that we're willing to do this, that doesn't mean we have to go out and borrow the money and start okay. paying money against it. So this may not pop till seventh FY twenty mm -hmm. twenty one for that matter. Yeah. But we appropriate that yes, go ahead, we're gonna do it and then we'll go get the money and you guys will vote a bond someday down the road, you know, when they come in during the course of the year. Okay. Everybody ready? Yep. I think this yeah. I mean, this, it's, a big, it's a big number, especially a year like this. It's a big number to vote for, but knowing that, well. <laughs> it's two years out. It's two years right, out it's anyway. two years out. We don't, we don't really know what things are going to look like two years from now, but um, uh, I think that, I personally think that without this component, the downtown corridor project is pretty much a waste of money anyway. I agree with you a thousand percent. <clears throat> okay. All right, ready for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay, carries. Okay, we're going to address the easements. Easements are on page. Yep. Uh, 29. <coughs> As part of the the tip process, there's a pretty stringent, um, as a formula, but process procedure to follow. Uh, more of a federal type of process uh, in order for the tip funds, which are ultimately federal funds, to be spent um, and awarded. You have to go through this easement process. It identifies all temporary easements. Um, permanent easements for <coughs> right away and permanent easements for utilities. Um, we're in the process right now you know, with the, the vote last week to incorporate a few changes. We're updating the plans so that we have <coughs> an up to date, accurate um, set of right away plans that we can present to um, ASDOT in their 75% design. Um, the 75% design. You know, we, sometimes it seems like, you know, they're asking us to do things well in advance, um, but they need all these easements finalized, um, accepted, not accepted, but um, finalized from a impact standpoint for that 75% design before we can really start um, negotiating uh, and reaching out to these folks. Um, it's typically a, a nine to 12 month process. It's kind of why we're starting it so early. These articles, more or less just asking, uh, you know, was it permission, but for, for the selectmen to kind of negotiate uh, through any means necessary, um, gift, uh, uh, takings, uh, eminent, eminent domain um, for the easements, the temporary easements, and, and each of the easements, you know, the town has to hire a, an appraiser uh, as well as a review appraiser. The review appraiser reviews the appraiser's appraisals. Uh, so w in order for us to go off RFP, we need to finalize, and that's kind of what we're in the process. So what this list in the article is here is, is all the temporary easements, pretty much all the abutting properties to the, the, the downtown project. Um, the temporary easements uh, are more or less, since the project is going right up to the right-of-way, in order for a contractor to do work 
up to the right of way, they're going to have to access private property for grading, for excavations, for plumbing, seating, some minor stuff. Um, you have to s sign a, an easement with each of those property owners just for that. Uh, then there's permanent easements for the right of way. Um, this would be, for an example, you know, uh, if the right of way, currently there are a few spots where the sidewalk is outside of the right of way. Um, this project is proposing to, you know, recover those, the full extent of the sidewalk. That would be a, a type of a permanent easement because of the right of way is changing. Uh, and then there's a utility <coughs> easement, which would be for the underground utilities. Um, you're going to have to have a, a, a utility easement from from the right of way to the property owner's uh, house in order to install that underground. Uh, and it also incorporates the traffic signals. You have mast arms that might be um, like the corner of um, the, the Sunoco station is going to have a, a mast arm extending beyond the right of way. So there's there's several types of easements. Um, in each of those easements, the appraiser has to you know assign a value to them. Um, and, and we've just started that process now. And it, should. it should be easy. Yeah, I, I think this makes all the <laughs> sense in the world. It protects the landowner, actually, because then we got to repair whatever gets banged up. Yeah. But I can just hear it now. So there's going to be a lot of confusion around this. Okay. Well, the main, the main point is that approving this is just giving permission to start the discussions right. with these property owners. Right. Just be ready with your elevator speech. <laughs> and um, we have no idea of knowing right now which of these would be gift, which of the, uh, these might actually involve taking. So any money involved, that's going to have to come out and be approved at a later date because we don't know right now. So that that'll be further Cor down. Correct. Correct. And, and there is a. There's, we're working with council on this because it's, it's the most complicated part of this project so far. Um, there are specific time frames that, that can elapse in 120 days. Once you sign an agreement, you have X amount of days to get to town meeting and to, um, to, to register your deeds. To, to record it. To record it, to register your deeds. So, and it's only 120 <coughs> days. So we're trying to work with uh, town manager and town council and figuring out how we can fit this into the annual town meetings um, because special town meetings are, are not going to happen so uh, for just this purpose you know. yeah. so council is still working on that but getting permission um, at town meeting for you folks to start that process um, is, is one of the requirements b before we can submit a final 75 percent design okay any further questions for all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So that was the first one. Do we have to do all Come three? Off, Next one's a temporary easement. It's a different article. Yeah. yeah. But I think same, same, same. I think savings exactly. planned it all. Same okay. Yeah. Any, any, any questions? Nope. Mr. Del Torrio? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And then the permanent easements is next. Page 32. Yeah. Any further questions from Mr. Deltolio? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That one carried. Okay. And that's it. That's it. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Dave. Dave. Okay, with the chair's permission, uh, we'll invite the, the town clerk to talk about the uh, equipment that he's uh, requesting through town meeting for supporting the election process. What page, page are we on? And this is on the pay as you go. Yeah, pay as you go is on page five. Uh, the election precinct take later update. Hello everyone. Hello town clerk. So uh, what I'm looking to it's been a, a few years coming at this point is to um, replace the aging election equipment that we have for the tabulators. Um, so the plan that I kind of have with this is to kind of get two birds, one stone. 
as we approach 2020, we're going to be uh, reaching a point where we're probably going to have the population levels. We'll have to re-precinct, as well as possibly add another precinct. Um, so it ended up being a cost savings to look into buying five machines with the individual boxes already attached, rather than doing the usual four and a spare. The idea that the spare is not necessarily required. We currently have a spare of the, uh, the AccuVote model that we currently use, but they are discontinued. Um, the service charge is increasing on them. The only way to repair them is with spare parts from machines that people are getting rid of or trading in. We are getting a trade-in bonus. Uh, so for all five machines, we're going to be getting $2,500 trade-in bonus, which is bringing down the cost. Uh, but we have had these machines start to kind of fail on us. I know uh, we had one election where we did have to deploy the spare machine because uh, the machine actually stopped working for Precinct 4. Um, and we did manage to get it up and running. Uh, it wasn't during my tenure, it was just prior to my taking office. But uh, I'm looking into the event of trying to both prevent that, but also prepare us for uh, the future when we're going to be dealing with much larger populations, uh, larger quantities of early voting ballots, which currently haven't changed at all, so it's still going to be a lot of folded ballots that these machines were having a lot of trouble handling. We were getting a lot of jams, which defeated the, a lot of the purpose of having early voting, which was to decrease the lines. Uh, so we're kind of hoping that new machines with uh, the decreased service charge will eventually give us some cost savings in the future. We won't have to worry as much about if we do hit a fifth precinct, having to get a brand new machine with a new box attached to it. Worst case scenario is if we needed to spare for some reason, which we wouldn't for a while, foreseeing uh, how well we take care of our equipment here in Hopkinton, then we could foresee renting one if we needed to have a spare backup. So these are going to be the same optical type, not the hanging chad kind or anything like that? Nope, these are optical scan, and uh, they're just the more advanced model from the same company that we've used before. They have great service. Um, you don't pay extra, like, uh, there are two different ones we were looking into. Um, one of them, you bought a bronze, silver, or gold service package. This one, you got it, and you had everything in, included in it. And they've uh, always been very attentive. They are close by. Their main, their headquarters is right up in Salem, New Hampshire. Uh, so they're pretty quick on the spot. Uh, I called them today to come and service the machines before the election. They said they're going to be here tomorrow morning. So uh, we've had a lot of luck with them in the past. What's the price of the new machines? The new machines are going to be, uh, I think they're at 28000 And what was the remainder, Norman? Do you have that in front of you? 750 750 Yeah, sorry. And that was minus the, uh, the 2500 for the trade-in value. So they were 31250 minus 2500 Yeah. So that's each? That's for the entire, oh, all five. For all of them? Yeah. So now this isn't something that would go out to bid, would it? So the 2500 wasn't each machine? 2500 was, was total. Total. Oh, okay. I thought that was for each For five machine. machines. Okay. So it was 500 per machine. Okay. Gotcha. At this point, they're mostly using the machines for parts. They're not selling much of the machines anymore. Yeah. I'm assuming this is from the state bid list. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is, there's only two machines uh, that are current models that are approved to be used by the Secretary of the Commonwealth right now. This is one of those. What's, like, the latest and greatest that's uh, acceptable for for voting procedure, voting hardware, and that kind of thing. It's so there. both these machines that are options, um, both of them are roughly the same age when it comes to uh, the design. They are far, both far newer than the other uh, two accepted models, which are their older models like the ones we have. Um, so it, between the two of them, both I went out and talked to clerks across the state and asked uh, the experiences they've had with both. And I was getting that this was the, the best one for bang for your buck. 
but just in terms just if if we had whatever budget yeah um, what's out there you know I mean is this the hot, the newest technology that that is being used out there for across they, the United they States haven't for approved voting? New technology for quite a while um, this one is still new by the standard of how long it usually takes for them to actually start even considering new equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't heard of so any. There's nothing out there with touch screens where this actually you know, would have touch booths screens. or anything this like that. This would have touch screens. Um, okay. This is relatively, this is still very new technology mm -hmm. in this field. Um, it's still just like with the current ones, it's all internal hardwire, so there's no risk of. Uh, any kind of results leaking or being tampered with prior to printing out a receipt that's read off from paper ballots. Mm -hmm. But it's still taking, yeah, it's still taking the paper ballot, yep. scanning it through. That's the only thing that the state allows at this okay. time. Okay, gotcha. Okay, thanks. Any further, any further questions? I'll just say in presidential election of 2012, precinct one went down, and we were doing hand counts until around one o'clock in the morning, and uh, it was it was not fun. <laughs> No, it, it's definitely a... It's a long night. And then it costs a lot more in time for <coughs> keeping people there at the polls longer to count out those final numbers. Oh, we were free. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready for a vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That one carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Fire Chief. Fire Chief will speak to the ambulance replacement, Deputy Fire Chief Inspector, as well as the fire communication system. And then pages? Pages five. Five and six. And six. And I pay as you go. Uh, again, these are three projects that he has presented to the board already before. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if the board has any further questions for him. And they're all pay as you go. Mm -hmm. We've already voted pay as you go. So. Chief, welcome. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. I apologize. I wasn't prepared to offer up much more, so I'll be winging it on any questions. How much of the communication system? Um, just so you understand, it's it's uh, fire, police, DPW. It has to do with the Verizon copper lines that tie them all together. Verizon's discontinued um, our ability to utilize copper lines. so. Many communities have been scrambling for the last nine months uh, coming up with solutions for uh, anything <coughs> that takes uh, repeaters and uh, communication systems to work. So right now we just have a rough concept of how it would be done. We've worked with our local vendor, Orhees Communications, who's done this for some of the surrounding communities. Um, we're going to try to clean up a few pieces. We currently have a repeater that's run the police out of Holliston. We're going to bring that into town under the new system and um, try to work on something up on um, uh, Legacy North and Wilson up in that area where the uh, tower is. So just to kind of improve in our communication system. So he feels pretty good about the 100,000 ballpark number, but there's still some real detail that's going to be drilled in. Okay. Any questions for the chief? I know when I know when you spent a hundred thousand dollars, you did you did your due diligence and made sure that there was. I'm, I'm doing a lot of work with um, Josh and IT. We're trying to see whether there's some pieces of our own town infrastructure where, longer term, we can do some savings. It would be like uh, adding <coughs> fiber, town fiber, versus leasing fiber lines from, say, one of the. Uh, other communications companies, so we're studying that pretty diligent, talking to the schools right now and some of their future work just to make sure it's integrated. So we will do our best. Thank you. Any further questions for the chief? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The next chief is Talk the right into that one. Deputy Fire Chief Inspector Vehicle. Sure. So the. The 10 year capital plan, it's due for the deputy's chief to car to be replaced. Um, the car is in fairly decent shape, and we have a new inspector's position. So, what I'm proposing to you is um, replace the deputy's car, and there are still some good years left in the car, and we need a vehicle 
for this second inspector to function good. Um, it's, it's an opportunity. If this vehicle did better than some others. It's probably in better shape than my car. My car is a year newer. It's just aged well. So um, it w there is no intention to add any car to the fleet long term. And we did some assessments with some of the other vehicles where um, we're like we did with the ladder truck and one of the pumps we're trying to consolidate. So it's my recommendation to you. I think it would be a smart move. If I could just ask, I noticed that the, the vehicle you're talking about right now only has 40,000 miles on it, I read. Which oh, is not I a lot of miles. I just didn't bring the paperwork yeah, no, with no, me. I, I, I looked up the materials and I was just kind of, because that's, that's not high mileage. So did you just say you didn't have an intention of adding another vehicle? Because so what I'd like if, to do... If this didn't happen, what would you do? Would they share the car or... I mean, that's not a high mileage vehicle that needs no to um we kind of talked about it last meeting they tend to get um they have a lot of idle time when we it, his is an operational vehicle like mine so i might drive it to a scene and it may sit and idle for four or five hours and that's so the mileage um can be a challenge like a traditional vehicle to say how long it's good for um in Full disclosure, the vehicle is in fairly good shape. This was the one I said to you that out of any vehicle, if we had to go another year, it could go. But with that caveat, um, I would be t putting the inspector into uh, an F-250 pickup truck driving around. Um, we could do that. But I, th I think your best plan would be to replace this vehicle on schedule. And um, I could put the inspector into the deputy's existing car. And what I'm looking at in my plan is to combine a brush truck in this F-250, which will you'll see coming forward in the next couple of years in the capital planning. I'm trying to see if I can combine them, and then you wouldn't get an increase in the number of vehicles in the fleet. Okay. So this is the, uh, they want the blacked out tactical paint. It won't be a blacked out tactical. It'll be something, we. what I try to do with the uh, last fire prevention vehicle, if you saw it, it's, um, I buy what they have on the on the lot. It's the cheapest price and it follows the state bid. We tried some um, decaling, which doesn't show up quite as good as what I'd like, but it's um, it's it's not undercover or black. It's um, it'll be a fire vehicle. So, Chief, this this will be you'll be getting this new vehicle for the <coughs> deputy and then handing so not trading in the other one. I'd like to it down. I'd like to keep it in the for another two to three years is what I projected use for and it's a much more it's a limited use with the inspector right now so okay any further questions for the chief all those in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed any abstentions okay that one carries ambulance chief so the ambulance um the key points for the ambulance were the existing ambulance that um, doesn't have a power lifting system I had mentioned to you. So the power lifting, lifting system is a power cut and it's a power load and it really um, saves on an uh, employee's back. And I can just tell you from personal experience, my back's not in the greatest shape. It's because we use manual stretchers for 20 years and they mm -hmm. just finally catches up to you. Our new ambulance, I run all the time policy. I made a policy change because it's that effective for lifting and uh, just to lower the frequency. Um, the downside is I'm running the new ambulance into the ground. So I'd like to, this has moved up one year early. I'd like to um, replace it with the same equipment that my new ambulance has. Plus it adds four wheel drive was one of the other features versus drop down change. Just don't work well for transporting for medicals. I can do them in the fire trucks, but medical is not so good. Pretty so nice. those two reasons are um, just real. I'd, I'd recommend moving it up a year. There's a little bit, the trade-in value I'm still working on. That's my only downside of this is there's not a lot of trade-in value for a used ambulance right this second. But um, just for the lifting mechanisms alone, I just uh, I don't want to wait an extra year um, for our crews. The volume, call volume going up, the amount of, on the one ambulance I'm running front, I'd like to remove that ambulance to secondary, get this newer ambulance in a year early, and uh, they'll both kind of stay in that frame of living life now. You can't just put them in two anymore. Can't just put them in two, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's a, 
shame. I would certainly hope you could get some kind of trade-in because I'm noticing that that ambulance only has 36,000 miles. Yeah, the so number that, that I've low. got right now is about 60,000, and just I just share that with you because to me it's 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 not in that bad of condition, so I'm going to work hard to try to move that get number up. Um, some of the I'm guessing that some of the other communities are looking just what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. This this uh, power lifting came about four or five years ago. It wasn't ready for right when we bought that ambulance. Mm -hmm. It is it's. Um, more effective than anybody even anticipated. It works really well. Mm -hmm. It's a $45,000 piece too. I looked into seeing whether I could retrofit the ambulance mm -hmm. because of the suspension that came with it and drilling underneath is some question whether we could actually do it successfully. So there was just too much risk in trying to retrofit it. So I said, this is the, makes the most sense to go with this avenue. How much is a new ambulance? It, I think the price was 290. Um, the, um, I don't yeah, have yeah, my. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you the number right now. So, so we're looking a little over two hundred thousand after trade. No, the. Um, Necessarily. The numbers are. Boy, what was the number I got? I'm sorry, yeah. I don't have my packet with me. Yeah. Uh, the. Twenty twelve cost two hundred and ninety thousand. This is a five-year-old ambulance with 36,000 miles. And the trade-in value is, yeah, yeah the purchase price is, in fact, purchase price is 330,000. Yeah, the right. less trade-in is 40,000, and then the net cost is 290,000. Mm. But we don't know if we can get a trade. The, the 330, <coughs> I, I literally built, um, uh, a quote out for an, a proposal for bid, and it, it's pretty solid. So that number, I, I, it's real close to what it will cost. Mm -hmm. I had checked with two different vendors, and we, we moving this forward a year. I want to make sure I had the right number in front of you. And you're comfortable knowing that you'll be able to get forty grand for the trade? Forty easy. <coughs> I, I thought so it was going to be more like sixty, and, and forty to me is like low. Yeah. Would it be worth? Do you have the room to house? A third ambulance to not trade that in mm -hmm. um, and make it a third ambulance. I don't know if you even have this. Uh, like, the only time I could think it would make sense is if it, you know A2 goes down, A1 is in service, and then rather than have to call mutual aid, you could just dust off A3 and bring it back up. So I don't jinx myself. We studied that really hard two years ago when I did some of the consolidation. Um, and we, one of our fire trucks, we now have medical equipment in it. It can be, an emer it's designed to be an emergency response at the ALS vehicle, it's licensed for it. There's some capital costs that it's good for us to be down to two right now. Our current level of staffing, when it would move up, I don't, this isn't the ambulance, okay. I don't think, to hold on okay. to. We, we might have to look at that, say, um, the ambulance we're purchasing right now, that's probably the one when it goes around that you'll probably look to see if we're up around 3,000 calls a year. If we have eight shift, you'll probably say, but there's some real expense to holding a third ambulance. We did it for a while and I watched it. I have to do annual inspections, annual license fee, a monitor, drug box. There's a lot of cost to maintain all that just for a backup. And the number of times, and again, not to jinx ourselves, as long as one doesn't break down bad, the number of times I have a town coming and cover that call, it's, it's not worth it. Okay. okay, any further questions for the Chief? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Good job, Chief, thanks. thanks. And again, so that you know, this is funded through free cash, and in this case will be funded through the Ambulance Revolving Fund. Oh, yeah. I thought I read the chief said the ambulance fund, if, if it was necessary, but it was supposed to be free cash. It is ambulance fund? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought I read your statement that it, it could be ambulance fund or ambulance fund could contribute if necessary, but it was going to be free cash. You're saying this is the ambulance fund? It's the ambulance fund. Yeah, you usually tell me the funding sources, yeah, so I, I don't usually decide that. Okay, because yeah. from what I what I read on the materials, it it was like it seemed like that was a possible but not a definite. So it is a definite. He suggested we took him up on it. <laughs> what's what's that going to do to your ambulance fund? 
Um, you're going to have a cushion. <laughs> I was wiping it out. We have a substantial balance. Yeah, we've done well in the last couple of years on the okay. drawdown of it. All right. Because I, yeah, I guess that really is good to be used yeah. as right. you know, discretionary by the as chief. Long as, so we don't, don't, yeah, we're about as long as we don't drain it, you know. Right. So, so, okay, so this is not free cash. This is going to be funded by, thank you, okay. Okay. What's up next? Um, IT, again, Josh has presented these projects before. Yeah. I want to close off any, if there are any um, lingering questions or any questions. What page are um, you on? You go back to the, five. yeah, page five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the end user happy replacement, public safety saver upgrade, and then the town hall security upgrades. I remember last time he was here, the board had uh, an extensive discussion with him and uh, He's here to answer any additional questions you may have. And this is all still part of free cash and what we have budgeted right now. Correct. All set. Mr. Sestari, you all set? Uh, the end user hardware replacement, that was just the laptops and desktops, 35 grand or something like that. Correct. Okay. okay. I remember that one. Town hall security upgrades. Is that for mm -hmm. South Street? 18 Main Street. Oh, really? Yes. Yay. What's there? We're moving back. <laughs> We're moving forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything? Mr. Tetzer? Negative. That's it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So that's. Uh, all three? That's all three. All three. Thank you. Tough night, huh, Josh? It was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Sorry, sorry to keep so long. We'll get it next year. Yeah. Who's up next? Okay. okay. We've, at least from my, from my agenda, we've, we've covered all the capital uh, articles. Like <coughs> what about the police vehicles? The police cars. Oh, the police cars. Uh, the chief was here. Remember, his last pitch was he initially mm -hmm. requested three cars. Oh. He brought those down to two. Mm -hmm. He's using a gift account to purchase the third car. Um, the combined cost for the two that was sent to us this morning, I want to give you the exact number. What page is that one on? Six. Six. Six, top page six. Yeah. Mm. So there's two f vehicles. Yes. Police cruiser, say, okay, where do we go? Mm. <laughs> yeah, the the total cost for the two is ninety thousand. Yeah, ninety thousand less the trade in of three thousand, and the net cost is eighty seven thousand. Three thousand dollars to trade those cars in. Yeah, two. Is, is that a piece or for both? Each. 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 I mean for both. For, for both. both? Yes. So 1500 dollars Yeah. It's 1600 bucks just to have them in my yard. <laughs> That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. 1500 bucks. Yeah. That is kind of crazy. Now, is it me or just a couple of years ago, weren't our cruisers $30,000 a piece? Now they're 45. You've been on the board a long yeah. time, though. NAFTA. I'm pretty tricked out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, stuff yeah. Uh, again, the the the. Is it because of the new style that we're getting, or or am I just wrong? Yeah. yeah. Well, there used to be Crown Vicks too. No, the rest of these. Some regulation around too. Yeah. I remember forty-two. I don't remember thirty. Really, I thought they were thirty. I, I could be wrong. I'm fine with the 45. The trade in. The 1500 buck trade in, my goodness. I mean, they still I'd have say to hold on the state bid, right? But exactly, yes. They don't yeah, go out they and buy a car. Exactly. They yeah. go There's the state bid list. Yeah. So, take under the state bid, do you have to trade them in? Oh, no, we, we don't have to. Uh, in the past, as you know, um, the police department has uh, handed down vehicles to other town departments. But yeah. it, it all depends on the condition of the vehicle. 
Del, Del Toro has it, left. He's, he's driven. Oh, Pease is like yeah. 1978 or something. Yeah, he's, 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 he's keeping his, though. Yeah. That's not <clears> one <throat> going in? Hmm? That's not one of the ones getting replaced? Not that I know of. No, I don't think so. Who's? Phil Powers. Well, he's taking that with him. That's his retirement present. Yeah. <laughs> he I can have it. That trade would be like for for if, if these, if these three year old cruisers are getting 1500 for a trade, what's his worth? Five bucks? <laughs> <laughs> for 15 should, be, should definitely be passed exactly. down. Yeah, the, yeah. I, is there a way that we can make a motion that we don't trade them in for fifteen hundred? I'd rather put them out in, in front with a for sale sign and for ten thousand bucks. Lieutenant Porter, <laughs> in your in your best <laughs> estimation, would you say that the cruisers that you're getting rid of are worth more or less or equal to fifteen hundred dollars each? Fifteen hundred is, is a high ball. For us to get from when we trade them into MHQ. If the cruiser is salvageable or not fit for, you know, day to day operation, at least five minutes, what we try to do is we try to refurbish it and pass it on to somebody at Highway or yep. in another yep. department. If it's low mileage and not much wear and tear on it, that's our ultimate goal is to pass it down. Okay. So we're not forced to. No, we're not fast. Okay. Oh, okay, good. That's okay. what I was. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I'm good yeah. with it then. Chief Slamming? These could be the these could be the cruisers that the chief was trying to replace two or three years ago, and we didn't allow him to. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah. It's true. We did not have any right. time getting <laughs> right. Yeah. That's okay. Just a, our last car that we re traded in a mine. It was it was um, it couldn't even go to. You were making fun of Dave. It couldn't even go to Dave. It, and the trade in actually made it easier just to get rid of it. Yeah. It would have been more work for me to try to get rid of it. The trade in. I got like $500. I don't know why they even gave me that. So was that your personal? That was C2. It, it, yeah, and it was just it was it was not roadworthy. So it, yeah. just to get it to the them, and yeah. it, it just facilitates it easier for us in some cases. Okay, thank you. Okay. You know what I'm leaving here. You guys can't keep up. <laughs> Any further discussion on the police vehicles? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Wow. Lieutenant, you had it. You had it even easier. <laughs> okay, Mr. Town Manager. Yeah. Um, I, I, again, on, on my agenda, <laughs> we were hoping to um, at least go through the DPW and facilities. Um, it so happened that the, the chief was here and the town tech was here, so we've covered more ground. <laughs> the only question I have, in fact, is an email I received from uh, the superintendent uh, inquiring uh, to the board uh, if the board would, would consider uh, setting a ballot question for the TEF field project. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't like having the turf field anywhere near this thing in, in the state of where we're at right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same mindset. I just don't think I don't think that it's the responsible thing to do after everything we just went through in the budget. I don't, I don't think it. I don't think it even belongs out there for consideration. Yeah. So I disagree. I think for the 20, I don't have the number exactly in front of me, 26 bucks or whatever it is for the average family, uh, it's a great investment for the town. And with the CPC funding and the private funding, it's a very minimal cost. And I think it'll improve the asset you know, portfolio for the community. And I think moreover, I think it's a community decision make and not one for five of us to make let's put it on the ballot and let the community decide if they say no they say no fruit street fields he said no twice and they passed it a third time but it went on the ballot each time and we sorted it out quite frankly right now i would rather see the uh cpc funds get designated and held and see what they could do with private fundraising which they've talked about 
I want the sidewalks. I, I'd rather have the sidewalks. You want a drone. <laughs> Drones are cheap. Yes, I know. Um, the, if I may, through the you chair. May. Yes. The next scheduled board of selectmen meeting is the 10th, next Tuesday, I believe. With the chair's permission, um, should we invite the fields committee and the school committee to come and present their request formally to the board? Well, I think they've been here a couple of times this year yeah. updating us. Yes. Yeah. If it's going to help us at least put it on the ballot, then it would make sense. But if we're not inclined to put it on the ballot and there's not three votes for it, why would we? I don't want to waste anyone's time, including ours. Okay. I mean, I, I know they can make their pitch. They did a whole EHOP forum on it, which I've attended. They've presented it here. Um, I mean, I don't know how much more new information would be <coughs> here. To think it's just a, just a kind of a fiscal responsibility question for this board, but I, I, that, I'm just one person. I don't think I'm going to get any more information from them making their pitch again. That's just me. Yeah. No, I, I, I understand that the board has um, received updates on the project previously. I'm just thinking from a fairness viewpoint, it may be helpful at least to have the proponents uh, make their formal pitch. All I simply wanted to do was to indicate to the board that I've received this email mm -hmm. uh, from the superintendent. Do we have time on the agenda? Yes. We got a, yeah. Those are getting pretty filled up. Yeah. Right, we can do a we can do an eleven thirty again. Okay. Everybody's in a good mood at that point. Mr. Kamala, you are the master of the pregnant pause. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. so on the on the turf field committee there's I think nine voting members and then three or four liaisons. And then you have the five school committee members. And you have the whole athletic department of the school system. I mean, there's a lot of people that have put a lot of time into the town making a decision about whether or not we want to have fields, turf fields at the high school complex. It just seems to me that that process should continue and the town should make the decision. I understand the fiscal issue we have in front of us. I get it. This is bad optics. It's bad everything. But a ton of work has been done for two years, and it's I believe it's a town decision and not a five-person decision. And by us not, if we take a vote not to put it on the ballot, then five people are dismissing the work of dozens of volunteers. No, I don't put on a later ballot, can it? I'm sorry. Can always be put on a later ballot, can't can't it? Just, just like we well, did. that's what happened last year is we voted not to put it on the ballot. Now, maybe it wasn't, we didn't have all the facts like we have this year, but still, last year we said no, no ballot. And now I'm, no, I'm saying, votes I'm saying, if, obvious, I'm like saying if, they, if they still ask for action at ATM and people approve it at town meeting, then it can be put on a later ballot. Does it have to be in May's ballot? Well, we'd have to call a special election, which would cost money. Does it, but does it have to be within a certain time frame? What's the specific time Because I know that what the, it wasn't the, uh, the marijuana one, didn't we have uh, a year and a half? Or? I don't think it has to be in the same, same. fiscal year or anything like right. that. Right. <coughs> Again, it's, it, it, the separation between the, the town meeting vote and the election always has to be guided by whether the townspeople will still be familiar with the subject. Mm. Can't wait two years. <laughs> Can you wait for one year? I think people are well, still... Well, we're doing that the marijuana one is what I'm talking yeah. about. We, yeah. did the, we did the vote at... Yeah. Uh, is, the it, so the, the is, there any, is there any election in November this year? Yeah, there's a statewide... In the midterms? Yeah. There's a statewide election. So, go, go on November's ballot. Mr. Town Clerk. I was uh, just going to state earlier that I had spoken with the town manager about this and uh, 
it might be prudent if it ends up being, I mean, it's already on the, the warrant for town meeting. It's already gonna be discussed whether it's no action or not. If it does go for any motion, we don't have something waiting on the ballot, then yes, it's gonna require a special election, which will increase costs for, you know, how much we're gonna have to spend for the operating budget. Um, what I, I think, if it ends up being on the ballot and it's voted down at town meeting or it's voted no action at town meeting, then it's a null question. We don't have to worry about it on the ballot. It'll just be there as pretty much a question that people can vote on or not, but it's not gonna change anything because town meeting won't have appropriated the money. I think the question was, is there, there's a midterm election in November, right? Yes, that was to an earlier so, statement. But yes, there's a midterm election in November. Um, so what kind of cost does it add to put this mm -hmm. in the midterm election? Uh, additional printing and coding. Mm -hmm. But that would probably be it. I'd need to consult with um, the folks that code for our, our ballots. But uh, most likely it would just require coding the, um, the chips for the machines to take an additional <coughs> ballot that would have a single ballot question on it. Okay. And it would essentially be a special town, a special town election being held at the same time as a November election. Got it. So people would walk in, get two ballots, fill them both out, and then return both. Yep. So, so I'm again, like personally, I'm totally against at this point. Like I would love to see a turf field down the road. I just think that where we're at right now, <coughs> financially, I don't think it's responsible for us to think about spending three point eight million dollars. Um, but what Mr. Hurst said to me also resonates where there's been a lot of people that have put a lot of effort in, townspeople that, volunteers, that. There, there are a lot of efforts that volunteers in town put in that don't come to fruition for multiple years. I'm not trying to downplay the effort mm -hmm. that they put in. Um, but I think that what it comes back to is this board has a responsibility for fiscal fiscal responsibility um, for the town and to do what we think is appropriate for all taxpayers and their property values. Um, I personally don't have any problem whatsoever in saying this isn't the year. And if the way we the way we can voice that is through what goes on the ballot, then so be it. Um, uh, you know, I think even um, uh, in the town clerk's words a few meetings ago, you know, he was saying that people look to us for guidance <coughs> when it comes to the budget and the mm -hmm. fiscal guidance and, you know, where we think things are appropriate and where they aren't. And this is one of those times where we can use our voice and, and state what we think is appropriate and what's not. Yep, and I agree with you 100%. It was just one of those things I'm trying to wrap my head around where I don't want to come off as a martyr in saying that because I personally don't agree with it. I don't think the town should vote for it. The martyr's sitting to your right. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Okay, folks, I can count the votes. Like, this is so obvious. I'm completely in favor of letting the voters vote, but I see where we are with this process, and frankly, it hasn't changed in two years. So let's just get on with it and move on. I completely disagree with where we're going, but let's just get on with it and move on. I like it. Smaller, what else we got? Well, we got to vote on, don't we? No, no. That's no action. Yeah. There's no need to vote on it. Okay. So, so to be clear, the board is electing not to take a vote to put the fields on the ballot. Is that correct? Well, it sounds like a couple of people want to, a couple of people yeah. don't. So wouldn't we take a vote? Okay. okay. All those so I move that the Board of Selectmen approve a ballot question for May 2018 to uh, place a ballot question on 
place a question on the ballot for the annual election to support the development and construction of the turf fields at the high school or school campus yeah, yeah. Yeah. location. Just one slight correction. Place a debt exclusion question. A debt exclusion question yeah. with the understanding that 1.7 million of the 3.4 is CPC funds, $500,000 will be privately raised, and the balance would be ultimately what the taxpayers would have to cover. Yes. And that uh, tax impact is in the $20 range, I think for the average, somewhere in that range. Mr. Chair, I would um, state that I would caution that this is uh, not exactly an item that has been placed on your agenda for this evening, and you may wish to discuss this at your next scheduled meeting date uh, and vote for it then when you can actually have time to put it on your agenda. No, it's a requirement article. So we talk about requirement article. This is a ballot question. The ballot questions are voted at a different deadline and are separate. What is the deadline for the ballot questions? Is it is it next Tuesday but for our purposes in terms of our meeting? Is, um, is it the 15th, I believe? That's correct. Yeah, the 15th. But I think this is in line with the agenda posting that we're going to discuss with yeah. town meeting articles. This is an article on the warrant. And this is know, an action can, as part but, of that. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. I mean, we're getting advice. It doesn't hurt to wait till Tuesday. And, yeah. you know, we can either vote on it or not have a motion on it or whatever. Um, you know, I think, that, I think that it's a silly chance to take right now in, in breaking any open, open yeah. meeting laws when we're getting the advice from town clerk. You know, when we can still do it next Tuesday. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I apologize for the interruption. Okay. 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 What's next, Mr. Miller? I think we're down for now. Perfect. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thanks Thank for your patience, you. everybody. Uh, welcome back, everyone. We're just the chair went to a motion to, to um, open. Uh, Reopen to again tonight for the Tuesday open April 3rd. We just have uh, a second uh, for a quick announcement. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Yes, we have a uh, planning board um, vacancy. Um, Kelly Carp uh, resigned. And um, just want to thank uh, Kelly very much for, for her uh, time uh, on the planning board. And I know it's uh, always a tough decision to. Uh, to resign a position, but uh, thank you for her for her time and effort uh, on the planning board. Um, but now we have a, a, a spot open, so if there's someone that wants to uh, come on, no, what's the uh, what's the what were the rules on that one? Apply on the town okay. website. Okay, apply on the uh, town website. And it would be for a one year until the, term next, until the next election. Okay, not. Two weeks from now, right. or no. month from now, right. Right. Yeah. That, that warrant's closed. And it's a joint appointment between us and the planning board. And then that is correct. For a one year Excellent. next election, and it's a one year expired unexpired term at the next election because okay. it's two years left in the term. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Good night again. Okay, Chairman, say a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now we can go home.